So Louis Dabo is top coach in Arizona. I'm only announcing one. So this is the third coach announced. Louis Dabo should have been named first because he is uh, by far the top coach in Arizona if you're so lucky to be around him. He's he's aged quite a bit. He's been around the game a long time, a, a ton of uh, expertise. He, he was actually, uh, you know, Louis Dabo, Jack? I, I took you to Santos practices before. Um, did you know he uh, is the Manchester United? Uh, he's a, a scout for Manchester United for North America, or was, but... He's a big deal. But players he developed. So I, I got these questions about Luis Dabo, and I'm going to show you some of his uh, training sessions in a second. I have video of that. Um, so Luis Dabo, just to name a few, he he produced Pablo Mastroni, which we do have the overlay for that, Ryan. Um, we have Pablo Mastroni, who he's played on the U.S. national team. He uh, is currently uh, coaching in the ML or MLS he was at the Colorado Rapids. He got fired, but I think he found another job as an assistant. But big-time player, uh, won a gold medal, which is rare, U23s. And uh, he's produced by Luis Dabo. And I'm going to show you the what he did, what the secrets of success, what Luis Dabo did for them. Uh, Evan Whitfield, who played for Chicago Fire, he won a gold medal uh, with the U.S. men's national team, but he had a stellar uh, career. And I'm actually going to – I'm going to bring on um, – I'm going to get a hold of Evan Whitfield uh, in further podcasts to talk about what was so great about Luis Dabo. What did he do? What are the secrets? And we'll find out secrets in a second because I'm going to show you. Brandon Tyler, who played for uh, uh, New England Revolution, um, he went to, I think, Portugal. Where did he go? What's a post from his father? Uh, Uruguay. Uruguay. Um, he was an ama amazing player, too. I was recruiting for BC before he made a decision to go pro. Uh, Scott Garlick, a goalkeeper, uh, played for Santos' uh, organization, and he is a very technical with his feet for a goalkeeper. But this is not including uh, how many players he moved on to play Division One soccer. Um, Arizona was different back when Luis Dabo was kind of running the show as far as developing players before it became, let's steal players and create a lie to get their money. Um and that's what happened. So Louis Dabo, he simplified things. He focused on really two things, dribble and be fit in small-sided games. That's it. There was nothing special. Um, we have a video. Show, show the video of Louis Dabo's train session. So th this is a typical session by Louis. Uh, dribbling. Occasional whistle. But they would do this all day long. And they still do. Um, it's not as intense because it, because of the lack of facilities and stuff. I don't, th I don't know if they do it two or three times a day uh, or uh, a week. But back in uh, when I was growing up, and, and here's what else you would do. Yeah, you would turn that down. Thanks. Um, you would do a lot of feigning, a lot of movement. Fitness. You do fitness. But this is soccer-specific fitness that uh, Luis Dabo did. And they would run. And run, and then when you thought you were done with running, you would run some more. Because in soccer, it, fitness matters. Having uh, the ability to control the ball. And I've done a million of these with Luis Dabo because he coached me at the Sand Sharks. Uh, this is at Soccer Locker, board to board, or Phoenix Sports Center, or whatever you call it now. The suicides, aren't they? Uh, that's not a suicide. That is, um, well, I guess you would be committing suicide if you keep doing this. But uh, That's why they call it no, suicide is up and back, up and back, up and back. But That's this was just there. Anyways, so very simple. So back in the heyday of Santos under Luis Dabo, they would dribble five days a week. I remember going to the training. I'm like, oh, I'm going to learn some secret stuff, Jack. I was going to learn something special. And what they did was dribble. And I'm like, where's the secret stuff? I, I would just dribble for like an hour straight. Cut, 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 cut. I'm like, I hate this. But they do it five days a week, Monday through Friday. Dribble, small-sided games, fitness. That's it. Repeat. Again, again, again. And then they play on Saturdays, Saturdays and then take Sundays off sometimes to go to church or something. I don't know. Um, but tournaments and stuff force them to play seven days a week. But that's how they rolled. They went seven days a week, basically. At least six every day. Jack, 
You're an American. Uh, how oh, often are you playing? How often I'm playing games? No, I'm training. Uh, just Monday and Wednesday. Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, because there's a field shortage. Uh, that's all he does. What are you doing on the off days? Uh, Fortnite. No. Or what's <laughs> what's the new new game? Minecraft. Uh, no. He's a Minecrafter. Jet. What do you or Deadpool? What do you call that now? What do you mean? Your your version of simp. I don't know. Super intelligent Minecraft player. That's uh, Jack right there. So, I'm telling you this right now, Jack. You cannot make it to the next level, whatever level you want to go beyond, if you're not training, working hard five days a week. Monday what about Friday. trying out for big teams? I mean, know the point of that. Play, play, train all the time. But that's what they did. Five days a week of training. And then play on Saturdays. Sunday. They worked hard. And... That's how it was done. It was very simplistic. And then on Saturdays, Louis Dabo coaching, he said nothing. Everything was quiet, face to face. And then if your parent, if your parent was going nuts, he would then sub that uh, that player out whose parents acting like an idiot, and say, "Hey, go sit with your parents." And then the player would be like, "Why? Why? Well, your your mom's doing all the coaching." Go sit with her. She has she has something to tell you, obviously. Everyone else can hear it. Uh, yeah, that's what you would do. He wouldn't say anything. And he would produce amazing players. And we all knew it. And everyone that grew up in my era, everyone knew when you got a Santos player, you knew where you're getting technical, a technical genius with the ball. It matters. It matters so much. Uh, there's if you enjoyed that clip, you can enjoy all the clips at youtube.com forward slash Coach Cameron Soccer to get all my content. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know what's going on and when we appear online, which is typically every Sunday, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Hope to see you this Sunday for our next live show.